people, the 1,000 people there, I'll spare them. Divide 1,000 by 10. What do you have? 100. That means ratio 1 to 100. If I find one righteous person among 100 unrighteous people, because of that one person, I'll spare the 100 people. I will wait for them to change. I will not destroy them immediately. Think about your family. How many people do you remember your family? Up to 5, up to 10, up to 20, up to 25. If I told you now, all your family, your father, your mother, your siblings, brothers, sisters, cousins, nephew, everybody, begin to write down names. Maybe by the time you write 50, you would have tried. Even if you wrote 100, and you are the only one righteous among them. And we're not talking about the righteousness of the Old Testament. We're talking about the righteousness of the new covenant that Christ has made you righteous. And Christ has uh, washed you with his blood. And then he imparts unto you, imputes unto you his own righteousness. And he gives you his grace. And you're living in practical, positive, profitable righteousness before the Lord. And you're only one among ten in your family. One among hundred in your family. God says, if I see one out of a hundred... 10 out of a thousand, he says, I'll spare the city. As we think about Sodom, many years gone by, centuries gone by, millennia gone by, we now think about our own place, our own cities, our own nation, and understand that God says judgment is coming. In fact, Jesus said, as it was in the time of Noah, so shall it be at the time when the Son of Man shall come. And as it was in the time of Lord, when he came out of Sodom, so shall it be at the Son of Man when he shall come. Which means the world will be as bad as Sodom. And if there's anything we need to do today, we need to carry evangelism higher. We need to take our preaching further. And we need to be passionate and a very aggressive in our preaching. Don't just stay somewhere at a prayer mountain, stay somewhere in a you know closet and we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. No, we must go beyond and then we must reach out to the people. And as we reach out to the people, I pray the Lord will answer our prayers and also make use of our preaching to reach out to the people in Jesus' name. Jude chapter 1 verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh as set for an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. There's hellfire. There's judgment. And we don't know when the time will be, but it's sooner than later. And the Lord will be getting prepared, saying, Children, the time is up. Come on home. And the people who are ready will go with the Lord. But those who are like the relatives and the in-laws of the Lord, that will not accept the word. But the fire is coming, and it's going to be eternal fire. And all these are people that were not bold enough to tell them that judgment is coming. Where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? Is this the way we're going to practice religion at the end of time? Or are we going to wake up and say what the word of God says is true? Judgment is coming. All will be there. Those who have rejected, those who have spawned the message, we're going to rise up and rescue the perishing and plead with them earnestly and bring them into the kingdom. There's a great day coming, a great day coming when the sinner shall be on the left and then he'll take the saints away. Where will you be on that day? And where will your relatives be? Where will the people, the people of this city, where will they be? I will only preaching and praying for healing and all that hype about their souls. Where will they spend eternity? From this time, we'll take this word serious. I said we'll take this word serious. Will you tell them? Let's rise up and tell the Lord. Brethren, let's rise up and pray. 
Let's call upon the name of the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us. He has revealed his mind unto us. We have been given a charge. The charge to evangelize, to rescue the perishing, to save those that are lost. In these last days, God is depending on you, is depending on me. Open your mouth, call upon the name of the Lord. That the Lord will use you as an instrument in his hand to win the loss in this time. Open your mouth. For the salvation of souls, like Abraham did, to rescue Lord and his family from the destruction of Sodom, we also can be used of God to rescue many. The reason why God told Abraham was for him so that he'd be able to intercede. And Abraham did not fail God. You will not fail God. Open your mouth. I will not fail God. Lord, I will not fail you. You have given us this information about the impending judgment of the 